take a full look at your network with Glasswire. For more information, check it out at the link below. Hey, what's up guys, CP Moddy here back with another video and we've already focused on NVMe SSDs and an ISP showdown, but today we're here with their SATA brothers in a massive 12 way SATA SSD showdown to help you pick the next SSD for your brand new system or if you're just looking for an upgrade, a really helpful set of numbers to find out which drive you should be buying for your next upgrade. Now today's video, we're taking uh, the top 12 SSDs from the top 100 list of sales from Amazon, so these are some of the most popular options that Amazon is selling at the time of recording, got them in-house for some testing and ran my numbers. We went from super budget kind of oriented options all the way up to more higher end expensive options. We picked up 12 of them, threw them in the mix and in just a moment we'll take a look at what we did buy. And I wanted to make sure I represented kind of an option for everybody from again super budget to a little bit more money than what you probably should be spending on an SSD. Again I tried to get the biggest range I could for just 12 different drives. So let's go ahead and get into what drives we actually picked up for the test here today. So first off, we picked up two drives that really need no introduction and these guys are the Samsung 960 Pro and 960 Evo. Running complete Samsung packages from Samsung Flash, Samsung controllers, they really show just how good an SSD can be from a single manufacturer. Both of them are still featuring the Samsung VNAN technology and offering good speeds, large capacities and a really big range whether you want more speed and less capacity or more capacity or more speed. Overall the Samsung drives are very well known. Another company that needs less of an introduction is SanDisk. Now their SanDisk Ultra Plus may have been on the market since 2013 but it is still looking like it is holding its own with an SSD that actually ranks pretty high in Amazon's ranking. Powered by the Marvel 88 SS9175 controller with SanDisk's own flash memory in this guy the Ultra isn't actually too bad of a drive. It may not be the world's latest and cutting edge technology drive, but hey, it definitely fills out a mid-range and is made by a manufacturer that makes its own flash, so when it comes to durability and longevity, it should be known that the SanDisk drives shouldn't be too bad in that department. Now another drive that also too needs less of an introduction is the Crucial MX500. Heck, we've even used it a multiple amount of times on this channel, there's a couple, of, even here is a box right on the wall behind me, so definitely we've We've used quite a bit of these drives in the studio right here, but we got another one in for the testing here today, again being the MX500. Now again we are getting 500 gigabyte units, but more on the actual specs of these drives in just a moment. This guy is being powered by the Silicon Motion SM2258 controller with Micron TLC NAND flash and in sizes of 256 gigs all the way through to 2 terabytes and there's really a size out there for everyone. Not to mention its price tag isn't also too really that terrible on the lower side of the price tag making it a really good option and definitely showing why it is pretty high on the Amazon rankings out there. Another SSD we also picked up continuing our SSDs was the Kingston UV400 SSD. Much like the Crucial one it is a bit of a silent competitor. Sure a lot of people do buy these things but you don't see them making headlines too often. It's not breaking any world records with the Toshiba TLC NAND flash and its Marvel 88 SS1074 controller. It really helps to fill out again that kind of mid-range of SSDs. Though that said, its industrial design is really on point and I absolutely love the whole metal aesthetic and the whole look of the drive at that. So if you're looking at something that's going to be sort of sitting in plain sight, maybe your case has a uh, nice two and a half inch adapter that sits in plain sight, this guy would definitely be a nice little drive there. Continue along, we also too picked up the WD Blue two and a half inch SATA SSD. Now WD has been in the news lately for their super fast Samsung competing WD Black NVMe drives and whilst their blue drive isn't as quick as their WD black drives, this guy's still definitely no slouch and the WD blue's actually the second time that they've gotten into the whole SSD market. The first time kind of a bit of a flop, so let's hope this time the WD Blue actually does stand up. Paired up with the Marvel 88 SS 1074 controller and also to SanDisk TLC NAND flash, this guy is actually not too bad and it's running the SanDisk NAND flash because of the fact that WD has acquired SanDisk not too long ago. Now moving on to a drive that actually does need an introduction though, this is the Inland Professional SSD. A company, Inland, or professional, I'm not exactly sure whether their company is an inland professional or it's the inland SSD and it's called the professional. Either way, no one on the internet can make their minds up about it, but this is a company that 
kind of is actually bold enough that they're going to be stamping the performance numbers on the sticker of the SSD. Sure, it's a big ugly sticker on the top of it, but hey, they've stamped it on there anyway. Powering this guy is a suspected Fazon PS3 111S11 controller and a mystery meat concoction of flash memory chips inside. Unfortunately, I couldn't actually open up my particular unit because it does have to go back to uh, the owner, so I only borrowed it and it's best not to open up someone else's SSD in case you break it. Um, but from taking a look on the internet, no one can really make their mind up as to what flash memory is inside of this guy's, with a number of people actually reporting different types of flash memory. It seems to be that the company is just buying whatever flash they can get their hands on and uh, marketing it off as their SSD. Now, this is probably not really the world's worst thing, as the Fazon controller itself actually isn't too bad of a controller, so I wouldn't be too concerned there, but uh, it is a bit of a questionable thing when it comes to the actual flash memory inside of this guy. The overall design is definitely a throwback straight to 2003 and all that kind of not really the nicest aesthetics, but overall quite the oddball of an SSD. But despite this, it manages to be number 13 on Amazon's most sold SSDs at the time of recording. So I guess someone's buying that, seeing that they are number 13 up there. Another drive that also too needs a bit more of an introduction is also to the Silicon Power A55 SSD. This is a drive that is definitely getting around the internet, has a lot more coverage than uh, the previous mentioned inland SSD, but this guy is from Silicon Power and is relatively not so much of a well-known name here in the Western market. But it is running on the Fizon PS3-108-S8-L controller again, it's a bit of a dog's breakfast with NAND flash from what I can gather being a little bit all over the place as well, but it is a little bit more consistent and no one can again really sort of work out which type of flash it's running, but overall it is running something under the hood, which is supposedly going to be pretty good. But another thing that does stand out for this particular drive is the warranty status. Anyway, on Amazon, it is looking at three years worth of warranty, which is actually not too bad. So even if something is to go wrong, you can try and get yourself a warranty return on that guy. And rounding out our drives, we also do have the Intel 545 SSD with a quad channel silicon motion controller uh, being the SM2258 controller. Quite a unique design, Intel definitely does stand out in terms of their industrial design, but the metal jacket that it actually is made out of actually acts as a large heatsink. So thanks to Tweaktown for these images, but we can actually see that the flash chips actually have some sort of thermal interface material to help transfer heat out of the chips into the actual body of the SSD. So not only do we get a nice metal body, but it also do doubles as a big heatsink for this SSD. And then finally, the last drive that we did bring into our test was the Patriot Burst SSD based on the Fizon S11C controller. It actually isn't too bad. It's got 3D NAND TLC and delivers good all-round package and when we get to the performance, actually isn't too bad. While the design is definitely something that wants to be hidden around the back of your motherboard tray, despite this, it is the second cheapest drive that we do have on test, so I can't can't be too unhappy in that department. Patriots definitely come along with a decent SSD here. So we've met the drives and let's go ahead and look a little bit deeper into our test use case. For testing today, I use my X99 test bench with a 5820K, a single GTX 1080, although that should make no difference to our actual benchmark numbers, 32 gigs of RAM, and I also do ran it on a full speed SATA 6 interface with only one other drive connected, being the boot drive uh, for the operating system of the computer. So no other drives, no other interference, no other bottlenecks, the drives were plugged straight into again a SATA 6 interface and on top of that we picked close to or 500 gigabyte drives. So there's a couple of them in there at 480, a couple at 512 and the others are at 500 but we tried to go with that 500 gigabyte mark. The reason why I did that is 500 gigabyte usually strikes a good balance between price, capacity but also to performance. The larger the drive, generally speaking the slightly better performance and the smaller drive, generally speaking slightly less performance. So 500 gigabytes usually speaking is a great middle ground between performance, price and also to capacity. I ran Crystal Disk Mark and a bunch of real world applications so now that we've seen them let's go ahead and get into some synthetics. First up again Crystal Disk Mark was run seven times on each drive and we grabbed the average from each Crystal Disk Mark run to go ahead and get our Crystal Disk Mark averages and starting to take a look at some of these graphs we see that actually they're 
coming together pretty well. The most surprising here was definitely the crucial drive, even though it wasn't exactly the world's most expensive drive and we were expecting Samsung to be on top, it actually wasn't exactly that how it played out. Even the mystery meat drive actually performed pretty well from uh, inland and again the crucial drive definitely stood up really well and I was actually surprised to see just how good it actually did perform. All in all though, all the numbers across the board did definitely seem to kind of average out and uh, we got very close numbers. There was no real stragglers and there was no real really high performance, they all kind of fell into a bit of a range. Which was, I guess, great for those companies who weren't exactly well known like our inland SSDs and Silicon Motion, however a bit of a drop for companies like Samsung who you'd expect to be on top here. But just Jumping into some real world tests and uh, again we got the same type of results. Load times were all within two seconds of each other thanks to the fact that they are all SSDs based on the SATA interface so there's not really too much difference here between them. In terms of actual frame time and also two frames per second there was no stuttering lag or any anomalies from the standard experience we'd expect from a GTX 1080 Ti and looking at the obligatory FPS graph as we all do know for a fact that SSD drives don't affect uh, the FPS performance but looking at the load times of the games which is much where the performance is affected we see again around about two seconds of each other is the biggest gap here this again should come as no real big surprise as well the SSDs that we are testing all here today are all about the same size all run about the same synthetics but also to more importantly they're all running SATA so it's not like one can be super fast and one's gonna be super slow the only thing that we can't really test in today's video is longevity now unfortunately it would take years for me to go ahead and run the test over and over and over to find the longevity of these drives and by the time we actually do the drives will be so far obsolete you probably couldn't even buy them but looking at the history of our drives drives that are well known are Intel Samsung and also do followed very closely by crucial with SanDisk and WD also do having a really good reputation for reliability now that doesn't mean you're going to be getting a guaranteed great drive and there's still a chance that you may be getting a dud uh, even from someone like Samsung but when it comes to longevity, unfortunately, we couldn't test it today. So you may want to look at some history drives uh, to learn more about that. Or if you want to learn more about Samsung drives in particular, you can find a video linked up there where we wrote 700 terabytes to a Samsung SSD. And you'll be surprised on just how well it held up. Now, looking at the cost side of things, well, the lesser known drives are obviously going to be much cheaper, but offering a little bit lower performance in the performance front. Though it is also too questionable about longevity and also too long term support for lower cost drives. Whereas on the flip side, with some of the Samsung drives being the most expensive, sure you're getting good reliability, good uh, quality there, but also too, they're gonna be really expensive. So you definitely wanna take into consideration the price point that you'll be spending on these drives. And finally, pulling up a cost per gigabyte chart, we can see, well, where everything does stack up. Obviously, our lower cost drives are coming in at the top of the graph, and our more expensive ones are coming in at lower in the graph, but it is all sort of working out, again, to be a very close average Average. It's something that's coming up quite a lot in these videos, even though these drives can be radically different from a company you've never heard of before to a big company like Samsung, everything seems to balance out to be quite an average across the board, which is something that I found really interesting. So let's go ahead and wrap things up. All the drives that we did test here today are offering good SATA performance and have a nice range of low cost SSDs through to much more higher expensive guys, but also to higher end options. With cost effective, more expensive, there's really a drive on test for everybody. The most surprising thing that we did find today was the inland and also two silicon power drives that I didn't really have much hope at all for. I didn't even expect them to work out of the box, but they actually were able to hold their own and stand up not too bad. If you needed a really cheap SSD to last you maybe a couple months while you saved up a few extra dollars for a really sweet NVMe drive, or maybe you just want to grab yourself a cheap little extra scratch disk, grabbing something like a silicon power or an inland drive may not be the world's worst option. But when it comes to longevity, support and aftermarket kind of stuff, it does definitely come back to bigger companies like Samsung, Sandisk, Crucial or even Intel and heck even WD that have a much better track record of this. Not to say that you won't get a bad drive from those companies and it's also too not saying that the Silicon Motion or the uh, other guys like Inland or anyone else out there offering a low cost SSD can't offer good after sales support, it's just I haven't exactly experienced it. Now when we look at performance numbers though, both sequential read and 
and also two real world numbers reflect are the same kind of numbers across the board with very average and consistent things from the cheapest SSD to the most expensive SSD where it really comes down to again is that warranty, support and also to price tag. Now for me personally I really don't like to declare a winner and also to a loser because these numbers that we collected here today are for you to interpret and for you to use to help you pick up the next drive. It's not up to me to say buy this drive and don't buy this drive, it's up to you to take the numbers that I just presented and work it out for what you need for your particular build. But I definitely know someone out there is going to be asking me, well which one would I personally buy? For me personally, I would have a tie between the Samsung offerings and also to the Crucial Drive, mainly from previous experience and backed up by the performance numbers that we did see here today. For both the Samsung and Crucial SSDs, I've had a really positive experience with their warranty and service teams, so for me, that's what I would go with, but if you are basing your purchase strictly on the numbers that we did collect here today, I probably would pick up the Crucial Drive. But again, use these numbers to work out what you need and also to what you are expecting for the price point that you do want to pay for. And if you want to grab one of these drives, I'll leave them linked all down in that description box. So if you want to check the pricing, if you are watching this video a little bit in the future, they'll be all linked down below. And I guess while you're down there, also do let me know what kind of SSD are you running in your system? Is it an Intel one, Samsung, Crucial, SanDisk? What are you running? Let me know down in that comment section. If you have a question about any of the drives that we did test here today, you can also do hit me up down below. But thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.